Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior. And today, like Ken mentioned, is the birthday of the Christian church. This is the day that people could first get born again. And by getting born again, receive Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, like was in, said in the manifestation, is seed. It's the seed of Christ within you. We had Jesus Christ living here on earth, right? Which is really great. Because of what he did and what he made available now, we can reproduce Jesus Christ in each and every one of us. Pretty wild. It's the seed of Christ within us. So let's go to Acts chapter 2. And we're going to start in verse 1. And it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and that is where I really wanted to emphasize, I was working on this teaching this week, and I said, when the day of Pentecost fully came. See, it was on its way since Genesis uh, 3.15, which we'll look at in a minute. And But they were all in one, in one accord in one place. But I want to look at today, fully come. It has fully come. See, they had waited a long time for that Holy Spirit to become available. They waited a long time for that. So to get started on this, I'd like to go to Genesis chapter 3 and just look at some things that said here in God's matchless word. In verse 15, it says of chapter 3, and I will put enmity between thee and the, and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. So here it's talking, they're going to put enmity between thee. And he, this thee is the adversary, the devil. Here it's called the serpent. So he's talking to the serpent and he says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Wow. What woman? Who's the woman? And between thy seed the adversary seed, right? And her seed, who's her? And it shall bruise thy head. The seed of the woman is going to bruise the adversary's head. Bruise it, hurt it. And thou shall bruise his heel. You're going to hurt the seed of the woman, but you're just going to hurt his heel. Well, this woman is... Mary, the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. She is the woman. She is the woman that it's talking about. We know who thy is. It's the adversary. He's the devil. Okay? But her seed is going to bruise his head. Pretty wild. Pretty just wild to understand. But it's good to know. It's good to know who we're talking about. To really show this, I want to start in verse 9 and just read this record, the whole record. And we can see the consequences of the fall of Adam and Eve, okay? You can read about the fall in earlier in the book of Genesis. But right now, I just want to look at the, what, the reaction, what happened, the cause of that fall. And in verse 9... It says, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Where are you, Adam? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eatest? And the man said, the woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. So God, first he goes to Adam says, what happened? Adam says, well, yeah, I, I guess I ate of the tree. I wasn't supposed to, but it was the woman that did it. She told me to do it and I did it. 
women tell people what to do all the time and they do it, but maybe they shouldn't do everything they're told. But anyhow, let's move on to verse 13. And then the Lord said unto the woman, and what you see going on here, God first talks to Adam, then he's going to talk to the woman, then he's going to talk to the serpent, and then he's going to work his way back down. And look at what happens. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou had done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Beguiled, what a word. Enticed. Got to her, so she did something that she shouldn't have done. Beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, now he's talking to the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of your life. The adversary is going to be a dust eater. Sometimes when I see dust in places, I go, there he is. In the verse that I started out with, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And we looked at that. The woman, Mary, and thy seed, his seed, the devil's seed, and her seed, and thou shalt bruise his head, and thou, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And then God works his way back up the pecking order. He goes, um, woman, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multitude thy sorrow, or thy labor is a better translation, and thy conception. In labor thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. One of the things that you, we're going to see as we read this, there's consequences to the fall of man, and this is some of the consequences. And that, that last phrase where it says, you're going to bring forth children, and thy de desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That was a consequences, but that was not what God wanted. God never designed the man to rule over the woman. And I can show you that by going to Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. And it says, And Adam gave names to all the cattle, and to the fowls of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helpmeet for him, a helper, someone to work with him. He, there was no helper for Adam. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh thereof in, instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be two, one boss, one slave. It doesn't say that. They shall be one flesh. And that takes getting to know one another. It takes negotiation. It takes talking. And it takes all that stuff you see in God's word. And this verse, before, written before the fall of man, is written in Ephesians, the church epistle. Mm -hmm. See, the woman... The teaching that a woman is supposed to be a servant to the man is false. It's not in God's word. Because of the fall of mankind, the man was going to put the woman in a position where she had to, that he was going to be the ruler. It is not what was set up in God's word from the beginning. Okay? And I think people had to understand that. Then they would understand that is negotiation. We're to submit ourselves one to another. So much of the word of God makes sense instead of, well, 
I'm the man and you've got to listen to me. No, it does say the man's the head of the church as Christ was the head of the church. He didn't rule over the church like, hey, you guys do this. He said, here's the word. Do you want it? So that's the way that works. Now let's go back to, let's go to verse 17. Verse 17, it says, and unto Adam. So he talks to the woman first. Now he's talking to Adam. He says, and unto Adam, he says, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Was the ground cursed before the fall? No. No. It brought, brought forth plenteous. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it. Better word, labor. He's going to work hard for his food. You shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So this is the consequences of the fall of Adam and Eve. The earth was going to be different. You're going to have to work hard all your life, these type of things. Now I want to show you what happened at the fall of mankind okay and we're to start that i want to go to luke chapter four the consequences we just saw but what happened all right so we're going to start in verse three chapter four verse three it says and the devil said unto him said unto jesus christ this is during the temptations and he said unto him if thou be the son of god Command this stone that it be made bread. He says, if you're really the son of God, take this stone and make it bread. And verse four says, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. See, we need some bread or we'll starve. Or we're going to eat some bread and food here this afternoon. We're going to eat, right? We don't live just by that. We also need the word of God. And so that's what Jesus says. But by every word of God. And the devil taketh him into a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment's time. You know what this is? This God, God showed him in a vision where he could see it all the kingdoms of the world in a moment's time. How can God do that? I do not know. But I know that he can do it. He's done it to others. Others have seen visions and seen it, you know, just like watching a video. Seen exactly what was going on. So the adversary was able to show Jesus Christ all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. The devil told Jesus Christ, I can give you all this power because it was given to me. See, Adam gave the devil all the authority of the earth. Before the fall of mankind, who had dominion over the earth? Adam, Adam did. Adam did. Adam basically <coughs> gave it to the adversary. He gave him the rulership of the earth. And it says in the last part of that verse, it says, and to whomsoever I will give it, I can do it. If thou wilt, therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. The adversary offered Jesus Christ all the kingdoms of the world if he would worship the devil. See, the devil's number one goal in life is to be worshipped just like God. He wanted to be God. He tried to overthrow God. So his mission is always to be like God. He wants to be God. He can't, though. He's the devil, one of the archangels the original archangels. 
Jesus in verse 8 says, Then Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And that's the way it still is. We're still to worship God and not the adversary, not the devil. So part of what was done in the fall of mankind is that Adam transferred the power of the earth to the adversary. So who's in charge of the world today? The adversary is. Jesus knew this. Look at uh, the Gospel of John. We're in Luke, the next book is John, chapter 14, and in verse 30. This is, this is the day in which Jesus Christ was arrested, put through some mock trials, and crucified. This is the day, that same day after the Last Supper. And he was talking to his disciples. And he says, hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world has nothing in me. He's called the prince of the world. And Jesus is saying, I'm not going to be able to talk to you because the prince of this world has nothing in me. And in Jesus Christ's trials and other things, he said very few words. Verse 20. I mean, 31 says, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. And they leave the location of the Last Supper and they walk towards the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus says, there's not going to be much more. I'll be able to do. Why? Because the prince of this world is going to have his way. Pretty wild. Go to 1 Corinthians, Romans, 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 6. How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. And the word perfect means fully initiated or people that under, know the Bible. People that have read the Bible and understand it. He says, I'm going to talk to you guys that understand the scriptures. Yet, not the wisdom of this world, nor the princesses of this world that come to naught. Mm. He says, the princes of this world don't really know what's going on, but who's, who's the prince of this world? It's the adversary and his other devil spirits. They run this world. You know what they do? If they want to flood out a bunch of people, they flood them out. They want to cause a big train wreck and kill thousands of people. Who does it? They have really the prince of the power of the air. You know, wants to bring a little cancer. Who brings it? The adversary. Who gets blamed for it? Hmm. The adversary is tricky. Verse 7 says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. See, we didn't know everything that was happening. Adam and Eve didn't know everything that was going to happen. God kept it a secret. And part of the secret was to the prince of the power of the air. He didn't know about this. Verse 8 says, for it says, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they knew that me and you could get seed, Christ within us, they'd rather have Jesus Christ here. And I'll tell you why. How many places can Jesus Christ be at one time? One place. How many places can we be? Well, as many as there are. We can be anywhere we're at and we can speak God's word. We can teach them God's word. We can heal people. We can do everything that Jesus Christ did. Wow, pretty neat. So the adversary would rather have one Jesus Christ than what we have. Well, that's pretty neat. Go to 2 Corinthians. It follows 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. 
See, we might want to speak God's word to people, and we do. That's what we do. We say, hey, I can teach you the Bible. Come to our fellowship, I'll teach you the Bible. And so the gospel is hid to them that are lost. It says, if but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world. Huh. Who's the God of this world? The devil. The adversary, the devil, which, which hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, bless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You know what we are called to do? We're called to be imitators of God. We're called to act like God. It says in, uh, in a place in God's word that the works that Jesus Christ did, we can do also. We have that ability to do the works that Jesus Christ did and greater. But the adversary at the fall of mankind elevated the devil to the ruler of this world. I know from God's word that if we believe God's word, we are better than the adversary and all his devils. I want to go back to Genesis chapter 4 and look at something that's kind of interesting. See, in Genesis 3.15, that we started off with almost at this fellowship, that there's two seeds, one of the adversary and one of the woman. The people who are born again, who have Holy Spirit, have the seed from the woman, which is Jesus Christ, and we now have the seed of Christ with us, and in God's word, it says incorruptible spirit that lives and abideth forever. So we have that seed. But there's still, I want to look a little bit at his seed, calls it thy seed. And in chapter 4, verse 1, and it says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and she said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. <laughs> she thought that she got the Christ. She thought that she was the woman. She goes, oh, I'm the only woman here. So I got the man from the Lord. Oh, boy. And she again bared his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto God. He says, here's my fruit here. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of the flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel's and to his offering, to Abel and his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. He goes, oh. And it says here, and the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? Why are you so bummed out? And why is thy countenance fallen? This is very important what we're going to read here. It says, if thou hast done well, shall not be accepted. And if thou hast not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his. That should be it. It's talking about sin. It says, if thou dost, dost not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be it desire. Okay? And so it is talk is what the word should be, and it's talking about sin. Sin. And thou shall rule over him. What's going to rule over him? Sin. And that sin is really Satan. It's the devil that rules over him, okay? And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. So he talked with them. They're walking, they're talking together. They're buddy buddies. This is my brother. We're buddies. 
And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. He's my buddy. I love him. But he looks just like me. He killed him. That's a, that's a, a way that uh, people who were born of the seed of the serpent always act and look like they're your buddy. They're your buddy. They're on your side. Wow. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? It's not my problem. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened the, her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield un, unto thee her strength. In other words, the strength of the soil that develops the plants that you eat. He says, it's from now on, it's not going to give its full strength to you because you have killed your brother. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast has driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from the face, thy face shall I be hidden and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. That was his worry that everybody would kill him because, well, he was the first murderer. The first one born of the seed of the serpent. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slaineth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Why did God do that? I do not know. But it's written here. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So God said, just leave him alone. I'll take care of this. And people who are seeds of the serpent, they do many terrible things. You can think about throughout history, people that you think might have, might have been people born of the seed of the serpent. Hitler, this guy, whoever we got in power now, they're, they're still here. They're still here. But we're to leave them alone. I'm going to tell you why, because vengeance is mine, said the Lord. God will take care of them, and their ending will always be destructive. Hitler isn't around talking anymore. He's dead. You know what I mean? These guys have violent endings to their lives, and we just let go and let God in our lives. You know, this is the way God works. I mean, this is the way, I want to say this, this is the way the adversary works. He will use these people. He will use them. He's, the devil is nothing but a parasite. He will use these people, and when he's done with them, he will kill them. And sometimes, they're, they're, uh, as he kills them, kills them off, their fame will continue to do stuff. You know what I mean? Someone that I think about is, uh, this is an example. You guys can do what you want with this, but there's John Lennon, one of the Beatles, hated God. Imagine there's no heaven. That song has been magnified and has been played more times since his death than before he died. Matter of fact, John Lennon was a mediocre performer until he sold out and became a seed boy. And whenever his name is used, it's always to belittle God, every time. 
I don't know how all these things work, but this is what I do know. Greater is he that is in us that is in the world. And let those boys do what they want. We're going to speak the truth of God's word. See, we could go out and just shoot all those uh, boys of the seed, right? They would all be dead. But that's not what God has called us to do. Our God has called us to proclaim how good God is. And that we have Christ within us. We got the seed, the good seed. See, there's two seeds, one of the adversary and one of the woman. And that seed of the woman is Christ within us. It's the good seed, which is pretty cool. But just to show you a little more, I guess, on this topic, go to third, go to first John chapter three. It's right near the back of the book. And this John, by the way, is the same, is, you know, John that wrote the gospel of John and some other books that we're reading here. Hey, you know what it says in verse one of chapter three? It says, behold, what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Who was the first son of God? Jesus Christ is the son of God. And we are just like Jesus Christ. That's what I'm trying to show you here. It says, behold, what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God Therefore, the world knoweth us not. You know why? Because the God of this world has nothing to do with us. In Genesis, it says he, enmity. You don't have to look at it, but enmity. That's another word for hatred. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. We're not going to get salamed by the world. The world's not going to say we're cool. Because it knew him not. It didn't know Jesus either. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. That's what we got on the day of Pentecost. We are like Jesus Christ. I like that. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. This is what we do in our minds. We say, okay, I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. The word says so. Not just here in a lot of places. We're the son of God. Verse 4 says, and it says, whatsoever, whosoever committeth sin transgress also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. And we know that he was manifest to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Okay. In Jesus Christ, there is no sin. Verse 6. I got to put this together for you. It says, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither hath known him. Okay? If you're born again and you got Holy Spirit, can you sin? Yes. Of course you can. Sometimes by tomorrow morning. You know what I mean? So what is this sin talking about? That's what we have to put this together. Verse 7 says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. I think of these verses when God said to Cain, why are you so down in the mouth? If you did good, wouldn't you be treated good? He's saying, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous even as he's righteous. And he that committeth sin is of. See the word of? That means seed. I'm of my mother and my father, right? Seed. He that, you know, says he that committeth sin is of the devil. 
for the devil sinneth from the beginning, and for this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ destroyed the works of the devil, paralyzed it, <coughs> paralyzed that work. Verse 9 says, so whosoever is born of God have not committed sin. Well, we just said that we can, every believer can commit sin. So what sin is this talking about? The unforgivable sin. That's what this whole section is about. The sin commit, verse 8 says, he that committed sin is of the devil, of seed, right? Here it says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. The unforgivable sin, the sin of, of being born of the adversary. We don't commit that sin. We can't commit that sin mm -hmm. if we're born again. If you're born of God, you're born of God. If you're born of the adversary, you're born of the adversary. Right? Right. right. So if we're born of God, we got his seed. We can't get another one. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can't get that other seed. For his seed remaineth in him. What seed? The seed of Christ within us. For his seed remaineth him, in him, and he cannot sin. Where? In that one sin. Because you know what? I can get angry at my wife and yell at her and blow my top and sin. I don't. Not much anyhow. But, anyhow. <laughs> but the thing is, see, we as human beings, we can still sin. We live in a crooked and perverse nation. But we can never get the seed of the serpent. So if anyone ever says to you, I'm born of the seed of the serpent, and they think about it a while, and you can say, no, you can't be. You're born again. You can't have both. Because he is born of, and there's that word of seed and this in this the children of god are manifested we're children of god pretty cool and the children of the devil they're manifested too whosoever does not righteousness is not of god if you don't do what's right you're you're you know what i mean we have consciences. We know God's word. We can do right. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Hey, I'm a believer. I got Christ in me. I don't like you guys. That doesn't make sense. You know who else is our brother? Jesus Christ. He's our big brother. For this is the message that we have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. You know what this uh, beginning, from the beginning is? From Pentecost. Once we get born again, we can be lovers. Before that, we, we can't. But once we get born again, we can be lovers. And we love one another. We should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, there's that word of seed, of the wicked one, and slew his brother, and therefore slew he him, because his own works were evil. See that? And his brothers were righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. You shouldn't be so shook that the world doesn't like you. Don't marvel at that. We know that we have passed from death unto life. Now we're going to live forever and ever. That's pretty cool. Because we love the brethren, and he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Cain was a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we that the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, 
and we are to lay down our lives for the brethren. Once we're born again, we have the nature of God. We can be the imitators of God. I'm going to, I'm going to skip a little bit and go to chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. When it says try the spirits, it means to try what the spirits produce. They produce ideas, thoughts, songs, pictures, movies. Try all that stuff to see if it lines up with God's word. That's how you try it, yeah. to see if it lines up with God. Because there's many false prophets gone into the world, gone out to destroy people. Verse 2 says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Do you believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? Cool, huh? And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come in and even now, already is in the world. How many people can you find that will be against Jesus Christ? Lots in this world. Ye are of God. Talking about all us here that believe. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them that are in the world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in us. We got one because of Pentecost. We now have that seed of Christ within us. We've got it. They are of the world, it says in verse 5. Therefore speak they of the world. That's all they can talk about is things of the world. That's all they know. And the world heareth them. They like it. Oh, good. Yeah. Long live the world council. <laughs> I'd be looking the other way. But yeah. But ye are of God. And he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. Born takes seed every time, and knoweth God. And then the rest of this chapter talks about all the love we have, <laughs> which is true, and you can read it on your own. And next week, I'm going to get into more of what we have because of Pentecost on the good seed side. What do you think? Wonderful. All righty. Well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter, grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Janes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.